Hello, this is Joe Cogbill, and today I'm going to show you how the Weber carburetor for a Porsche 911 works. This particular one is on 69911T, and it has been sitting for 22 years, and the throttle shafts are a little tight but not stuck. I have pre disassembled some things to make this flow easier for us. And just want to explain how the carburetor works. First of all, there are three different things going on at once. This is the accelerator pump circuit. This is actually the accelerator pump itself. And then these are the little passageways that go up into the accelerator pump nozzles. Then there's the idle circuit. And you see there's this, this is the gas idle jet. And it meters down to the fuel adjustment screw for gas and then this one is for air. Now these, the ones for air, were pretty much set up at the Weber factory. No need to ever touch these for the most part. Also these are just to drain the float bowls. No need really to touch those. This just gets into the passageway where they had to drill holes behind these. No need to take these apart. So you know as usual when you take things apart some things just really don't need to be taken apart. These are the screws for the Venturi's and you see this carburetor has never been into. That's the original safety wire from Weber. Also you would see it on your uh, little, this holds the float in and you see that original safety wire. The third and the main circuit in the carburetor is within the carburetor. And now I'll try to explain how this works. Of course, you got the gas coming in from the fuel pump. It goes in. There are little screens in here. Under this little brass guy is the needle and seat. Okay, and here's the top of the carburetor. And here are the needle and seats. It's a spring-loaded arrangement here. This drops down into where the little tab on the float comes up, and then it depresses this shut and stops the flow of fuel and keeps the gas uniform in the float chamber at the right height. This is the brass float that's used in pretty much all 911 Weber carburetors, whether they're 40 millimeter or 46. Notice this is about the height that the fuel is in the fuel bowl of the carburetor. This little tab is what actuates the needle and seat. Always be careful not to touch or bend this. This is what sets up uh, the float height or the float level in the carburetor where the fuel is and you don't want to disrupt that. Also another little pointer when these are the only time you're ever going to use your 16 millimeter socket that you've had for years always make sure you use the 6.1 these are brass they're really bad to strip out. So I'm going to lift the top off Inside, I've removed one float. You see all the, the crud in here from sitting in the nasty fuel tank. Um, these are the injection nozzles for your accelerator pump. So when you hit the throttle, a very uh, small amount of gas is put into the carburetor, primarily to give it the initial acceleration and to get it started uh, these carburetors have no choke system to start in cold weather. So you hit the gas four or five times, these little guys squirt the gas in, then you've got a little fuel to get it started. After that vacuum of the, the motor sucking the air into the carburetor is what runs the carburetor. Now, the fuel comes in here. It is metered by the main jet. They're usually a size 125. And it just gives it the proper fuel to come up this well. And when it comes up this well, this little guy is 
called the emulsion tube, and you see the holes in it? So certain ones, like the racing ones, had a different setup of holes. The street cars have a different setup of holes. I think it's F42. The best I can remember is the most common one. Um, and then this is the air corrector. The air corrector sits on top of the emulsion tube. The main jet is metering the fuel from the bottom and it mixes right about where the float level is, the level of the gas in here, and then it runs through a hole here and into this, and this is called the pre-atomizer. A Venturi effect takes place, and you can see how the Venturi is made. It, it necks down and then gets bigger, and so that creates a suction, and the suction of the Venturi pulls the, the metered fuel down the pre-atomizer and into the motor so that the fuel can be burned, of course, when the butterflies of the carburetor are opened. So, and also to explain, that's how the main circuit on the carburetor works, is through the pre-atomizer, hole through the pre-atomizer, and by the way, you see they cast left and right the same, so you can put this guy in backwards, and he'll have five cylinders for sure, because only one side has the hole in it. So, fuel goes into here, metered by the main jet, wells up into where the emulsion tube is, sucks in the air through the air correction jet, and then the fuel and air mixture go through the pre-atomizer and whoop, down into the motor. Now this is the gas idle portion and you can see it has an idle jet. This is your gas idle jet. It's usually a size 55. Then it goes down this passage. This adjusts the air which we previously discussed, no need really to touch these, these are set for life. And then you meter the fuel with these little screws. You basically, they're usually about two and a third, two and a half turns out is usually where I set them up in the beginning. And basically when you've made sure that these stops are equal from side to side on both carbs, you don't want this open too much because then you won't be utilizing the idle portion of your carburetor um, and then you turn these screws in until the motor begins to sound a little flat or bark on that cylinder and you back it back out about a third sometimes a half a, a turn uh, depending on your elevation so I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the carburetor works now a couple of tools that you really need these are two different types of unisims this one being the cheaper one here, this one being the better one here. This one doesn't choke the motor down. When you put it in there, uh, it, it flows the air much better. Sometimes this does. you got to fool with it a while. Uh, the other thing that's really needed is a float uh, level gauge. I, usually there are shims under here for the floats or for the um, float level gauge. There are shims under the needles and seats. I'm always careful to use the same shims so that I don't have to do a lot of setup with the float level gauge. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a basic understanding of the 911 carburetor. I'm going to rebuild both of these and put them back on that 911T and motor into the sunset. Thank you for your time.